Hey fam, welcome back, welcome back y'all. Quickly, we are going to go over seven basic items that you should probably just start stocking up on. Um, these are basic items that you can use for almost any meal, any time of the day, and items that would definitely hold you. As a mother, I try to look for things that can basically serve me and my children. So very kid-friendly um, meals you can make with these ingredients. Um, something that every member in your family should basically like, right? So let's go over some basic items that you might want to consider stockpiling before they become unavailable or maybe just too pricey. All right, so some basic food items that we're going to discuss today. Um, might want to go ahead and consider getting these, not only if they might become unavailable, but maybe they just might fall short in supply. And these are some items that you could have on hand just in case. I always say you can possibly just reach any type of financial hardship or maybe you want to, you know, save up to go on that little vacation. Though it's kind of impossible for a lot of families nowadays, you can save up for something um, and you will already have those meals or ingredients to make those meals ready and available in your pantry. So this is Shauna, and I'm officially checking in over here at Moments with us. You guys check in. Let us know where you are watching from and how you are doing. So let's go over these seven basic items. I have some notes here, and I don't want to get lost. All right, so before we jump into this list of items that I have here, um, <clears throat> when I say stockpile, I do not mean go out there and buy the whole shelf up. I do not mean that. The way that I personally stockpile, even as a mom, of course, you're concerned about your children. Always, of course. Um, but everything is done little by little in proportions, right? In portions. Everything is done in portions. You want to get a little of this and a little bit of that. And of course, you're only going to store away food that you eat and eat whatever it is that you store away. Um, and after going through the comments... <clears throat> I'm seeing that a lot of you guys are now going through your stockpile. So those of you who have been stockpiling and actually, you know, putting stuff away little by little, look, it came in hand because now that prices are higher than ever, the last thing that someone wants to have to really worry about is groceries and household items. So that's one reason to go ahead and stockpile because if you can't afford it today and you have to wait maybe wait maybe a week or two to your payday or the first of the month when your benefits kick in, at least you will have something. Um, yeah, I'm getting stuffy, y'all. So yeah, the current condition of our, you know, <laughs> economy is just like, eh. Well, no, it's like we playing some tug of war. We we gonna be all right. We not gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. We not gonna be all right. We don't know. So let's go ahead and see. So the first thing that I always suggest is stockpiling rice. Why rice? Because rice will hold you when it's just that simple. It's no need to get into all oh, the benefits or the disadvantages. Rice will hold someone. You can pair rice with a lot of different things and be good. You don't even have to have that meat serving with the rice. We had days when we had rice and butter, rice and seasonings, and you mix it up. But rice would definitely hold you. But you want to stockpile rice, um, let's say, at a certain number of pounds. So depending on your family size, it's up to you to make that choice. And if you're a person who don't cook rice like that, you should definitely still consider stockpiling rice. And we've seen over the past months, months to a year, how fast the price of rice, you know, went up. And of course, the unavailable, the unavailability of certain kinds of rice. So my thing is jasmine rice. We when we do eat rice, I choose jasmine rice. But don't get me wrong, I have white rice stockpile. Um, but Smadi rice is like a hit and miss in the stores right now. And the price of like a five pound bag is like ten bucks. So you know, it's up to you what your family you know use. Eat what you prep, prep what you eat. <clears throat> so rice, definitely rice is number one. Um, canned items. So we're gonna go with canned beans, canned vegetables. 
because with everything going on with the farmers as well, um, and if you're not growing your own, of course, if you're not growing your own, having those canned vegetables available and ready in your pantry is definitely a must because you still will get all of your vitamins in um, if you have your vegetables, you know. Definitely, you want to keep a little healthy, healthy going in in your stockpile as well. So, them canned vegetables, whether it's beans, peas, green beans, um, whatever it is that you guys eat, definitely consider getting that in your stockpile. It's going to be canned everything, you know, in general that you would like to, that you should be stockpiling. But we're going to focus on those canned vegetables. You know, start there. And then move on to the canned meat because certain meats are becoming unaffordable. Realistically, certain meats are becoming unaffordable. The great thing about canned vegetables, they're ready. I mean, you can pop open a can and you can eat those canned vegetables. They're very shelf stable. You don't have to worry about, you know, your fresh veggies, you know, going bad. Unless you're a person that can and then you're good to go. But if not, you know, you're stockpiling your canned vegetables. Even if you're a person that can, per se. Definitely still having some of those canned items from the grocery store is definitely a must. Um, definitely should still have something put back. And I'm sure those of you who do can still have a little something, something put back, of course, from the grocery store. Um, yeah, they're very shelf stable. You can definitely, you know, eat on those for a very long time. But of course, you're going to want to check those expiration dates and rotate as needed. So if you're using from your stockpile and replacing from your stockpile, whatever is back from 2020, y'all, start to pull that stuff up. And if you're still buying those same items, just put them back into your stockpile. Rotate those out. Put the older ones to the front and the newer ones to the back, guys. Um, The next item... It's like your, your butters, your peanut butter, your honey, your jam, those items. Because once you have your flour and stuff and you're making your own bread, making a quick peanut butter um, sandwich, honey sandwich, jam sandwich, whatever it is that you're going to make, um, definitely is something to go ahead and stockpile. When it comes down to peanut butter, we did have that recall. I believe it was Jeff. I'm not too sure. I'll put it here. We did have that recall with the peanut butter. So definitely something to watch out for. Um, definitely look at those calories and all the ingredients on the back before stockpiling. Though, if you're hungry, none of that stuff is really going to matter if it ever came down, came down to it. If a person is hungry, a hungry person going to eat. And that's just my saying. A hungry person is going to eat. Whether you're speaking literally or, you know, just in life. Just like a dog. If a dog is hungry, it's going to bite, right? Um, Yeah, so like peanut butter. Definitely get your peanut butter. Get your jams. Get all of that stuff in your stockpile. All right, number four. Flour. We've discussed flour. Um, I can't say the price of this necklace. It's just ugh me right now. Um, I can't say the price of flour have went up tremendously but it definitely definitely went up um wheat 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 a lot of people did stock pal wheat berries as long as they have the grinder to grind that down then they're good to go so if you can find some wheat berries definitely give those a go um but flour in general, you need your flour. Stockpile that flour. You need your flour. You can make your cakes. You can make cookies. You can make your bread. Easy tortillas. Like, there's a lot of things that you would need flour for to make from scratch, okay? Um, and when it comes down to wheat, our, wheat, our current conditions with the war still going on in the U.S. and everything that's going on with the ships and... Listen, that's a whole nother video that we have, but there's a lot at stake here when it comes down to us receiving items in the U.S. in general. I'm not saying that, oh, we don't have nothing at all, but stuff is becoming scarce. So definitely stockpile some, um, some flour, definitely. So we talk about the canned vegetables. So now we're going to talk about canned meats. So depending, I might have to take this off, y'all. It's kind of like the strain. Let me just fix it. All right. 
So when we're talking about canned meats, canned meats, to stockpile canned meats in general, I'm going to be honest with you guys, to stockpile canned meats now is rather expensive than buying an actual pack of meat and canning it yourself. And that's only if you know how to can. But if you're going to go off of just buying canned meats, you got to think about the serving size. Most of the time when you're buying a canned meat, it's like a small, what, 10, 10 ounce can maybe, depending. Um, in the serving size, if you have a large family of five, I don't think a 10 ounce can would be good enough for the family of five. Um, and it can run you up, definitely. We're going to put a picture of like, let's say a can of chicken here. It will probably take two to three cans of chicken um, to feed my family of seven. But to stock up on canned meat right now, it would be kind of pricey. Unless you know a place where you can buy these items and then boom, you're going to get a nice little deal. But still, if you see the sale, stockpile those canned meat because the price of meat right now is, is ridiculous. All right, family, um, when it comes down to stockpiling canned meat, just make sure you have, like, if you're, if you eat the chicken, whatever it is that you eat, your canned chicken, your canned salmon, your canned tuna, they even have canned, um, shrimp in a the can. They have a whole lot of things in cans. Do your research, go to the store, get your checklist, tally it up. If you can afford it, get it. If you cannot, of course, get little by little but i cannot stress it enough that you need to have a variety of things in your pantry you just never know i just never know nobody just never know but just in case you want to have those things and also with canned meat very shelf stable for one you know you don't have to worry about pulling out your pack of meat let's say power go out you got your canned meat mm -hmm. um yeah you don't have to worry about pulling out a pack of meat and then boom then once it's cooked, it's cooked. And I'm not talking about the people who, you know, who preserve. Normally, once it's cooked and it's not eaten within a certain amount of time, it ends up in the trash. Um, So definitely that canned meat, put it on your list. Then we have like canned items like sauces, salsa, spaghetti sauce. Definitely, you can make a lot with different sauces, salsa, Sauces and spaghetti sauce, those are those condiments, that salsa and different sauces. Definitely in the can, get those. All right, so the next thing is pasta. Yes, different kinds of pasta. Bow ties, you have um, elbows, different ziti noodles. You have different type of pastas to go with the pasta sauce. Maybe you don't need the meat, like the ground meat to make spaghetti. Maybe you can go ahead, just make a pasta with the, um, what sauce is that? Cause we're talking about sauces and pasta. The, um, but they have like a garlic Parmesan Alfredo kind of sauce. It's really good. You can put that with some pasta noodles and there's your meal. That's it. All right. So to sum it all up, the seven items that you need to consider stockpiling now is rice, canned beans, peanut butter, flour, canned vegetables, meats, and of course some fruit. So canned items in general, um, sauces, salsa and spaghetti sauce, and seven pasta. So that is the list. That is the list of the day. I'm telling y'all I'm getting stuffy. So excuse me if my words sound a little bit funny. It's all right. Um, it happens to the best of us. What happened to my background? <laughs> um yeah those are the seven items that if you're starting off those are seven items that you should definitely consider stockpiling um i got my coffee going so if you found this list helpful and these are some of the things that you are already stockpiling or something that you want to share in the um comments to stockpile of course feel free to share that in the comments down below we're going to leave this video right here where it is at if you're new here, of course, subscribe. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. This is Shauna, and I'm officially checking out from Moments With Us. Make sure that you all stay prepped, stay blessed, and stay safe. Happy holidays to you all. I'm wishing you all a blessed, blessed holiday. Hopefully, you guys get to see family that you ain't seen in a long time. I know it sucks that people want to see certain family members during funerals, holidays, and... I don't know.
that's that's pretty much it but hey <laughs> hopefully you all definitely enjoy i'm gonna leave this right here where is that i'm officially up out of here you all stay prepped stay blessed stay safe most of our remain beautiful queens and kings thank you so much for tuning in we are out of here peace <laughs>